type of cutting. <laughs> All right. So I have that. So actually, I'm just gonna. I'm just going to go to Word. And I'm just going to make a little outline here. So I'm going to have an intro. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to talk about, blah, 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 blah. We'll pull that in later. Um, I, have, I have, my first paragraph is going to be on laser cutting. So within that, I'm going to have what? Material. Materials that can be used. What else? Oh, you're doing laser cutting? Um, yeah. See laser that I'm using? I thought you were doing. Well, I'm doing the laser with the. Because it's. The laser cuts out the part and the brick press fits it. Oh, I thought you were doing punching. You told me punching. No, but that's. You said CNC laser. Yeah, I said CNC Are laser you? and then you said. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Show me the videos of my classroom. Okay, so never mind. I'll do. We might decide to join the how to how we use together and the conclusion into one later, but for now we'll keep it separate. That's basically what I want my paper to be. I'll post this online so you don't have to write it all down. And it's on a video. Um, so that's kind of my basics, right? So how would I find out more about turning? How would I find out what materials could be used? Or more information about the process? The book? Yeah, the book. Maybe online. Maybe I'll just do the process up first and then the material that could be used. So I could go to the book and look at it. I go online and just. for turning. stuff on the side of it also. Uh, 
much good information. So you can kind of get some information about it. So then, maybe I'll come in here, and now I'll start filling this in. Something like that, right? It spins them, it cuts it out. The materials can be used, so. Metals, plastics. That's going to be late. So it doesn't. Yeah. So the format on this whole thing is like a. Like so, a right now we're just kind of doing the outline. Do we need an outline? I'm showing you how I would do it. Oh, okay. I don't need to see the outline. This is how I would approach it. If I was doing this report, this is how I would do it. <coughs> It helps to kind of get everything, because if you get, if you kind of fill in about that for a little bit, fill in this for a little bit, then when it comes to putting together, all you do is kind of join them together, add some transitions, and you're done. No and you're not trying to write three pages all at once, you're doing little sections that you stick together. Um, like mine. <laughs> yeah, so then, play back, sign factors. Um, so depending on how you're using it, maybe talk about if you're doing it on manual, it needs to be just concentric stuff. If you're doing it on CNC, then you can have other options for the sides and, and side cuts and things like that. So, so write a little bit about that. So the anodizing, what does anodizing do? It is folks aluminum. Way of putting the finish on aluminum. Yeah, and so how, what does it actually do? Charges the particle. And then does, what's the coating? <laughs> I want to say it, but I don't even know if I'm right, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Just say it. Uh, it's... Makes aluminum oxide coating. So it's like a type of corrosion on the aluminum, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you can, you know that you can ionize steel or iron. You mean corrosion resistant? It's not no, corrode. Anodizing is a, the layer you put on it. it it's like rust. Like it's like rust. On rust it. is steel or er, iron oxide. Anodizing, anodizing makes aluminum oxide. But you can anodize iron. It's just how you do it is real special because you're making a real thick rust layer right there, and, and it's a little bit different by how you do it. So it can be done, and, get, and you usually do it in nitric acid, so it keeps away some of the oxygen, or, or does it a certain way, I don't know. But you can read about there, I've seen another place that say the same thing. What is anodizing? This here does anodizing. So they might be a good place to get information about, about anodizing. If I did, I came up somewhere else that did like plastic stuff, or just like Joe Blow's website. Um, what I really want to go by what he says. It depends. If if what he said conflicted with what this side said. Which one would I go? Which one would I go with? This one, right? It's got some credibility. It's a company. They do anodizing as their main business, so they probably know a little bit about what they're talking about. Some high schooler that has a website puts something up that's wrong, maybe not.
this one's pretty good information. So I could do the same thing here. Process, make. Go on and on and on and on and yeah. on. This is materials can be used. <coughs> so it's not, not just aluminum paste. Oxide layer. Oh. Meaning the aluminum and the we'll talk more about that. Design factors. If you're designing something that's going to be anodized, maybe you'd want to have it so that you put in your tolerances that allow for that extra growth um, so that way parts still move like they should. Because when it yeah, it's, it's going to get a little bit thicker. <coughs> um, so. Talk about some things like that, right? Together parts are sure first, then da -da 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 -da, right. Can you anodize part and then turn it? Yeah. yeah. Would you want to do that? No. It depends. It depends. <laughs> if you want it, to, the whole thing to be anodized, and you want to be able to take off. The coating in specific areas and get it to a finished dimension after anodizing, you could turn it after it was done. Because then you, you can anodize and add some material to it. And so if your font is like a thousandth of an inch, you might want to come back and, and get it. And so maybe I'll just take out the conclusion. Depends on how you write it, if you want to keep the conclusion or not. So that's kind of it. So my intro is going to be, so how do you start an, an intro? Hi, my name is... No. <laughs> Slim Shady. My name is Slim <laughs> no, no lines. Slim how, how do you start an intro to a paper? What are you trying to do? Describe, the Describe, what, Describe you're what, what you're going to be talking about. Yeah, so that'll be later on in the intro. But what's the, what's the first thing you want to do when someone picks it up? Yeah, get their interest. Cause I'm right now. I'm going through like I've got 40 papers. I'm going through, and if I read that intro and it doesn't catch me, I'm throwing it down and picking up another one. <clears throat> so the first thing is something that's going to get their interest and get them to think, oh, I need to read this to find this out. So usually like a, a rhetorical question or a statement or something like that. Um, I like to use questions when I start my papers. Like, um, what would it be like if you could only have square parts? Something like that. Something that kind of gets them. That, or imagine this, and then you could tie that back in to the topic. <clears throat> so we'll start with a question. Yeah, question or a statement. Something that's going to get their attention. It's going to make them want to read the rest of it. So let's see for this one. What do I? That square parts one's kind of stupid. I'm not going to do that. Um, but I also don't want to just go into it and talk about turning and just jump right in. I want to have some. So.
Does that get your attention? Not really. No? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, which is which one machine can make an, an exact copy of itself? Or maybe a smaller version? Without using any other machines? 3D printer. No? Because 3D printer can't print circuits. And wires. What does that got to do with the the uh, the lathe and the anodizing? So a lathe can't. If you have one lathe, you can make another lathe, but no other no other tools. Well, they the mill. Well, they put the piece you want to mill on the carriage and your bit in the chuck. Uh, and so now you've got a horizontal milling center. Hmm. How it comes together. Now that's they make those all in one ones. You know they yeah. they're lathe and they turn up to be a mill and they turn your drill press because a lathe can remake can make everything. You can make square parts by putting the part in the in the chuck or in the in the, in the carriage in the bit in the chuck or it could be the part in the chuck and the bit in the carriage. Like normal to make round stuff. Hmm. <clears throat> so you can kind of introduce something, something kind of like that, something that's going to get it, get attention. Uh, if I had more than two minutes, I probably could come up with something better. Uh, um, so then you talk, you write a bunch, right? You, you write it a little bit, and then what's the last sentence going to be? First paragraph. Okay. So my last is going to be my thesis, right? What I want to talk about. So in this paper, my thesis. That's my my thesis. Yeah, just tell them. In this paper, I'm going to tell you this. This is what I'm going to talk about. There's no trying to find it, no guessing what it is. Now you know exactly what the paper's gonna be about. So you can read, if you jump to the last line of the intro, you can read that and go, okay, now I know what this paper's gonna be, look, be about. Do I wanna keep reading or do I wanna stop now? So the intro could be one or two sentences too? Uh, probably three. Three, or, three. Yeah, three or four. Yeah. You can maybe talk a little bit about something or you can talk a little bit about um, turning or, or issues or with them or something. But you can, a few sentences just kind of introduce what you're going to talk about. <clears throat> and then you're here you'd start. Turning is what we call it when you make a part on a lathe. And it makes round parts and blah 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 blah. It can be used on metals, plastics and woods, blah 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 blah. These, depending on what kind of machine, you can do these parts or these parts. Then talk about anodizing, same kind of thing. And then, so. And here, I'm going to talk about how they kind of go together, and then talk about 
usually they're only used together on the same part if it's a cylindrical type part and it's made out of aluminum. Um, so, because if you're making a plastic part, even if you're training a plastic part, you're not going to anodize it. So it can't be used on that. So just here, you can do that. So a couple sentences on kind of what's what was common, why you can, have, you can only use those two things, or why you can't use other things. To, maybe there's some things you can anodize, or whatever your second process is that you can't use on the first process. Or there's stuff on that you do it, you can do on your first process, but you can't do on your second process. Explain why. And then yeah, let's put the conclusion. So conclusion, we're just gonna talk again about a brief recap on turning. sentences or anything. So once you actually fill in each of these areas, it's going to stretch out. If you want to use pictures, you can use pictures. Just not huge pictures. So it might be really good if to, maybe in that conclusion, find a part that's aluminum, that's returned, that's anodized. Maybe I'll go images. That now, don't just have a picture sitting there, not doing anything. If you're gonna put a picture, you need to talk about the picture. So then, while you're writing, say, "Figure one shows blah blah blah." Right click the instant caption. Yeah. So you, you right click on it. Okay, so so click on it first. Right click, insert caption. So if I post a link, I, I have to describe the. Doing one yeah, and don't just put a link. Talk about what it is. Um, say where you got it from, and maybe put the link at the end. Um, so there's that, and maybe it might be nice to say that I got that from MustangDaily.com.
like that. Let them know where you got that picture from, so you're not pretending like it's your picture. What if I take my own picture? Then, then you just don't need to put that. <laughs> uh, if you use a direct quote, what do you have to do? Yeah, you have to cite it. Somewhere. <laughs> what about if you just if you went to that place and you got some information on that as you didn't know before? How would you do that? Would you cite that? Say it again. If you went here and you got some information that you didn't know before, you went to that that other a little, a little website. So we're going to mark every website we get information from. Yeah. Or at least general ones. And actually, um, for this one, for in the paper stuff, you don't need to do direct quotes for, unless you're doing a direct quote and you have quotation marks and exact wording, then put a citation after it and just put the author name or whatever. Um, but do do a work side page. And here, just give me citations for the different places you get information from. So it's the book, if it's the website. Oh, so we don't have to put it right, we just put it at the end. Yeah, unless you're doing a direct quote. If you want to do it all throughout, um, that's fine too. exactly the format we need and then it also tells me that if I'm citing it directly this is what I put in the thing so let's say Website into your paper, and you're going to use the exact wording, put quotes on it. Okay? If you do that, then it's not plagiarism. Okay. <clears throat> don't copy like. Whole paragraph? Yeah. Don't copy this whole paragraph right here, paste that in. Or copy this whole page. So, so what can we copy? Sentences. So. 
What if I copy it? <laughs> That's fine. As long as you cite it and you make the connection between it. I don't want it just citations all the way down. I want it. Because there's part of it is your analysis of it, of you explaining it. So if you're using small quotes linked with you explaining it, that's fine. That's what a research paper is supposed to be. It's the research and then what you say about it. Okay. So if it's mostly, if it's got a lot of quotes, but also paraphrase things. So take what it says and then change the wording. If you want to do that, and you're if you're just paraphrasing, it's real close to what they had written originally. You still might want to put that after to say that yeah, this is where I got that from. Like, and if you're in English class, you'd want to do that a lot. Um, Can we download that thing that you would yeah, I'll, I'll give you the link. I'll that, I'll post that link to it. Um, okay. And so, like in English, usually you want to have at least one source per paragraph. Kind of at the bottom of the paragraph, you have a source of where you got the information in that paragraph from. Um, so if you want to do that, that's fine too. I'm not going to be real stringent on it. Um, as long as it's in the works cited, so I can see that you've looked at a few different places, not just what you know from before. Just this, the, the goal of research paper is that you're going to give someone that has no clue about it, and they should be able to read your research paper and get a basic understanding of what you're talking about. So you're kind of you're going to be able to explain it to them, so that someone that's from history can look, read your paper and get a basic understanding of turning and anodize and what they are um, without having all the background. So if you have words you need to define, do definitions, whatever. If you have uh, abbreviations, explain what the abbreviation is. So. Um, So like if I was going to use CNC, someone might not know what CNC is. So the first time I write about that, I'd say, computer numeric control, that do parentheses, CNC. And computer numeric control? Yeah. I didn't know that's the first time. And then now, every time after that, I can just say CNC. If they look at it later on and they just see CNC, they can always look back up here and see what it stands for. So anytime you have abbreviations, always the first time you use it, spell it out, then put the abbreviation in, in parentheses, and then after that you can just use the abbreviation. Okay. Questions? Yes, no. Everyone's good. Um, once you start going, if you want me to look at it, just email it to me or call me over, and we can look at it and I'll tell you if, yes, you're on the right track, or maybe you need to add more here, um, or change this, or take this picture off because it's got a naked lady on it, or, <laughs> or pretty close. Um, so, um, yeah. For Jessica's case, a naked man. Yeah. <laughs> so, you want to make sure that any images you do put in it are appropriate for anyone to see. Um, well, she's dead in the front of the bike. Well, there's a naked monkey. monkey. <laughs> hey. That's okay then. <laughs> no. um, if it had something to do with it. But usually you want to show just that one thing. If you're going to show a picture, make sure if it's in the two paragraphs here, yeah, no matter what it is. But if you're putting a picture in your your conclusion or the, the, the how they're used together, make sure the picture shows both processes. Don't have it just showing one of the processes. If you're doing that, put it up in the other paragraph. Okay? So questions?